Alright, what is going on guys? My name is Lord of the Skin and I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to use PK Hex with uh, Gen 3 uh, Game Boy Advance games. Okay, so I've got here today, I've got my Game Boy Advance SP, got Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Fire Red, original copies, and I've got the Game Boy Operator, which you can purchase with the link below. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Game Boy Operator. Uh, now this comes in a couple parts. Get the hardware. And you've got the USB cable to connect it. Uh, it looks like it is Type-C to USB. And we're just going to go ahead and plug that into the laptop. And then plug it into the back of the Game Boy Operator. You see a little light. We'll turn on. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step through this. So when you purchase the Game Boy Operator, um, it comes with instructions on how, where to go and what software to download. Uh, this is created by Epilog. And uh, I will have all the links for everything in the description below. So you go to their website and you download uh, their software called the Epilog Operator. And once you have the hardware plugged in, uh, you're going to go ahead and boot up the software. Now from there, it's going to ask you to uh, insert your cartridge. So we're going to do uh, Pokemon Fire Red today. So the side that the light is on, there's a little arrow. And you want that arrow to be pointing at the arrow that's on the actual cartridges on the front of them. So you go arrow to arrow. Just plug it in there and we'll get a little sound cue that lets us know that there is uh, recognized uh, USB hardware on the computer now we're gonna try restarting the software now okay and now it recognized it so from this screen we're gonna go to data and you've got a couple options. You can download the game. This is going to give you um, like the ROM uh, that you can use to play in uh, like Visual Boy Advance and things like that. Um, but what we're going to be doing with the PK hexing and uh, the Poke Genning is we're going to go ahead and download save. So we're going to click start. This is going to give you the prompt for where you want to save it. I've got dedicated files for this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save that. Um, and now we are going to open up PK Hex. So from PK Hex, we're going to go back into where we had our save files. And we're going to take that save file that we just created, we're going to drag it in here, click OK. And there you go. You have a full look at everything that's inside my boxes. So from here, um, it's as simple as editing the data that you want. So let's see here. I think that uh, for most Pokemon, that if you want them to be uh, like a safe gen, uh, I would go to the Met and uh, set it as Egg. Yeah, it, there's not as many um, checks and balances in Gen 3 as there are in later games. It seems that each gen they add more and more checks for the legitimacy of Pokemon. Um, for these ones, it's very straightforward. If you want it to be like an egg, like it hatched from an egg, it's just, you know, you pick a spot and then met, level 0, um, and so on and so forth. And especially, you know, meeting an emerald is very easy. So for the purposes of this... I'm going to pick one that I haven't edited yet. So this is just a Pokemon that I caught. And um, there are guides online. If you're worried about legitimacy, you can literally put anything that you want into the game because you're injecting it directly. But if you are worried about legitimacy, so if you ever want to transfer these up to future games um, using the methods to transfer things forward and so on and so forth, 
um, you do have to be conscious of legitimacy. There are guides online uh, where you can find the information on where you can legally obtain these Pokemon within the games. Um, I would really recommend Cerebi. Cerebi has a big catalog of information for every single generation of Pokemon. I'll link that in the description uh, below as well. Um, so these are just things to consider when you're doing the legitimate, like when you're doing legitimacy checks. So of course, like you know, a Slugma, you're not going to catch it on Route One. Um, you you know, you can only find it in Mount Ember. So it's things like that, and the Met level has to be legitimate. Uh, go through and do all these things that are like legitimate. So if we'll do like 99, right, and then we'll give that a legitimacy check and see it's invalid Met level. Um, anytime that you're questioning the legitimacy of a Pokemon, you can always just click the legitimacy check in the top right corner. Uh, we're going to go back and we're going to change that back to 34. See? And then it's legal again. And from here you can see all the stats, you can see the IVs of the Pokemon. And um, editing IVs is a little tricky. Um, so, the... Gen 3 relies heavily on RNG to determine most things about a Pokemon. Um, so, like, whether it's shiny or not, um, what IVs it has, it all depends on this PID right here. So, if we do the legitimacy check now, it's going to say that there's a mismatch. If you were to keep all the IVs and then make it a shiny and then check, it'll still tell you that it's a mismatch. So this is why my method typically is saying that a Pokemon was met as an egg and filling out the information for that um, because you can give it whatever IVs you want if it's an egg. You can make it a shiny if it's an egg. Um, it's just, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to pass legitimacy checks for whatever kind of, whatever you want if it's an egg. Um, you can give it any legal attacks as well, um, and the o OT information. Uh, again, if you do care about legitimacy, I prefer to use my own. And because we are ripping the save file directly, even if you catch like a Pidgey on Route 1, you can still, uh, that will still have your trainer ID and your secret ID for you to then use on everything afterwards. So um, we're, we're going to give me a Dragonite, because why not? It's my favorite Pokemon, so we're going to go ahead and give myself a shiny Dragonite, and we're going to name it D's Nuts. I'm going to make it Adamant, which actually, that's terrible in this generation. We're going to go ahead and make that Modest, because Dragon is a special attack. We're going to go through the stats, we're going to give that 0, give that 0, 252, and give it 252, and we'll do like 4. And then for attacks, we're going to do Outrage. We're going to do Thunderbolt. Uh, I believe that Dragonite learns Ice Beam. Not sure about that. It does. And then um, we'll give it Flamethrower. And then we're going to go back and we're going to make this shiny. And it's still legal because it hatched from an egg. Again, if this is a thing that you caught in the wild and you make it a shiny or you give it perfect IVs, a lot of the times it's not going to pass that legitimacy check. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this in box 4. We're going to do file and we're going to do export save. And then we're going to save this to the same file and I'm going to name it new. just so I can differentiate. Now we're gonna go back to the epilogue operator. We're gonna click upload save. We're gonna click start. And I'm gonna go through and select that file once again. So we're gonna go save files, the folder that I made, and we've got the new save. So we're gonna open that, and then it's gonna upload it now. And you'll see um, the light on the thing, the light on the operator is doing a thing while this bar slowly creeps. And actually, while it, when it's moving slow like that, that is a bit concerning. You can have errors with that, typically. 
when it is moving slow like this, this might just be my laptop because I am running a video recording software or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip this part. Okay, uh, it went ahead and uploaded. It's being weird now. I'm going to go ahead and close the software first. And then we will eject the cartridge. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And we're going to boot it up. I'm going to go ahead and go to my PC. Now it did not work, uh, sometimes it doesn't, it is very tricky. So we're going to go ahead and try that again, and it's a lot faster this time, that's what I'm saying. Usually when it's slow like that, it's because there's a problem. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and close the software now, and eject the cartridge, and we're going to try that again. Now the software is not perfect, and again there's an update, I haven't updated it yet, um, but that that is kind of an issue that I've ran into a couple times, is if it doesn't upload the first time, usually just try again. Close the software, plug the thing out, plug it back in. Just be careful that you don't unplug it when you're uploading data to the save. You can potentially corrupt it that way, um, but there, there are ways around it. Um, if it doesn't work the first time, just try again. And if you run into an issue on PK Hex where it says that it can't read the save data, you need to download save again. Yep, and there it is. Let's see if I can get that to focus. We've got D's Nuts, the Dragonite, in my box four, uh, just like we had done in PK Hex. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments. I'm also going to link my Discord server. I'd be more than happy to help anybody with anything at any time. Um, it is very straightforward. Uh, as far as like doing things like legitimacy checks, again, I really encourage you to use Cerebi. Uh, it's an amazing resource. They have all the information about every generation of Pokemon, and you can find out where to get things, what moves they learn, etc. And so you know what you're doing going in so that you can pass these legitimacy checks. For getting like shiny legendaries and things like that, you're going to have to download um, event Pokemon. Uh, they've got files online. I, I might have a Dropbox link that I might put in the description. If not, two seconds of research will find you. Um, literally just look up PK Hex Files Gen 3 and things like that. You'll find lists of them on forums. If I don't link it myself, you can do the research yourself. Um, but yeah, those things exist out there uh, to make it easier. That's what I use most of the time to get any of those uh, shiny legendaries that you saw in my box. I use pre-made PK files. Um, because obviously finding the specific uh, PID and everything to make that legitimate is a pain. You're going to be re-rolling forever. There are formulas to figure out what specific PID to enter, uh, but I haven't found um, any guides online that really explain that well enough for me to be confident to do it on my own. Um, if there's ever a Pokemon that you're unsure about how to get legitimately, I would typically just look up um, a PK file online for that specific one, and you should be able to find it. Um, everything else that's not a legendary and you can hatch from an egg, set it as an egg. It'll be legit every time. Um, so anyways, that with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, again, any questions, ask them in the comments. Discord link below. Have a great night.